Hi there, Michael from Fraud Monitor. A few weeks ago, I received a special package on my desk. It was this box with a post-it note and the word fake written on it. So clearly this intrigued me quite a bit. I opened it up and inside was this iPhone. <laughs> it also had all the pieces and parts inside of a typical iPhone. On the outside, it looks pretty legitimate. Cameras look realistic. Overall, the feel is quite heavy, heavier than a typical iPhone. I was curious whether it was actually fake or it just didn't work, right? So how I came to have this in my possession, an individual purchased this on Facebook thinking it was a legitimate unlocked iPhone. Um, as soon as the person started to try to use it, try to log in, clearly there was something wrong. It wasn't connecting properly, that kind of thing. And this individual uh, had a friend who was in law enforcement, handed it over to this person. This person knew that I was in anti-fraud space and thought it'd be interesting for me to take a look at. And here we are. So what I planned on doing in this video is to explore this device together, um, probe it a little bit from an operating system perspective, hook it up to the console, and generally kind of see what we can uh, glean from this device, right? I won't take it apart in this video, um, that will be a, a, a follow-up video eventually to see what's under the covers. Um, so let's take a look at this uh, apparently fake iPhone and see what we can discover. So the first thing we're going to do is basically plug this into the Mac and see what happens. At the moment, the phone is has some charge to it. It's currently powered off. Okay, so the first thing we see is connect MediaTek MT65 preloader to this Mac. All right, we'll look up that in a little bit. Okay. Right after that went away, it showed the battery charging screen. And if you look at that icon, doesn't really look like an Apple icon. It's white and then, and then clear or something along those lines, right? Or an outline. Um, so clearly, I think that's a, that's a tell. And then what do we have here? Do you want to connect Android to this Mac? I think we're onto something here. So we're going to allow this thing to connect. And then we will power this up and then hook it up to screen mirroring to see if that works. As you can see, it's loading. A new message here. Do you want to connect MediaTek L015B to this Mac? Let's go ahead and do that, okay? So if you notice, look at the bottom of the screen. You know, clearly there is a gap right about here that you don't see on any iPhone. Pick up your iPhone and tell me if I'm wrong, but typically the screen would extend throughout the entire viewable window, right? Next thing I'm getting is a trust this computer your settings and data will be accessible. Whoa. What is that? Did you hear that? That was weird. Anyway, now I'm an Android user and not, not as familiar with iOS as I probably should, but this doesn't look quite right. Let's show that to you right now. And look at the pop up there. It's not spaced properly. I don't think Apple would use this phrase, but again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So let's go ahead and trust this device. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is, is try to get this screen mirroring to work so you can see what I'm doing on this device. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. In order to do that, I need to connect to my Wi-Fi. I'm going to use my guest account on my home network. And as I'm using this thing, it's clearly not an Apple product. Very slow to respond and react. This, the scrolling is disjointed. Again, I'm going to try to screen mirror this thing so you can see it, it working, but keypad entries are very laggy. It's just not a quality product. Okay. When I click on the screen mirroring button in the control center, right, to see the two overlapping rectangles, it does nothing. Usually it'll ask you what device you want to connect to, and it doesn't do anything like that. So let's try to find a different way to screen mirror this thing. Okay, this thing is pretty wild. This looks very much like an iPhone, right? These apps here and these icons look like you're actually using iOS, but this thing doesn't act like an iPhone. When I plugged it in to my USB and tried to load the console or do screen share, nothing worked. I couldn't load it up through my normal screen mirroring for an iPhone. I opened up Android Studio to see if I can load Android Device Manager and it doesn't appear, as you can see right now, it doesn't appear here, and we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, I was able to get AirDroid installed. What you're seeing here on the left-hand side 
is a app that you download from the Google Play Store so you can mirror your device over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or USB. So I have this right now casting from the device next to me to this desktop. So now I can kind of show you around and what this thing entails. So let's start with settings. And first thing you see, it's, it's, in, it's painfully slow. It is, it is definitely trying to emulate the iPhone experience, but running potentially on a pretty old version of Android, right? So you'll see when you set up the iCloud, the apps, this page comes up, doesn't look anything like what you would expect from Apple. Uh, I've tried to log in, it doesn't log in whatsoever. Uh, I, you know, you can put anything in here, Apple ID and password and hit next and you're connected, but you're, you're not really connected, right? If you sign out, nothing happens. Furthermore, let's go right to the app store. So this is your Apple app store homepage. If you click on the top link here, brings you onto a content page stating that we found all the apps we love, apps that have changed our lives. Not look at the text here, contents running together. There are extra commas, misspellings, poor grammar. Let's get out of this. So if you browse around this Apple store, you can check out a handful of these downloads, which don't look like anything like you would expect. And if you notice closely, you'll see a lot of these titles end with APK, which is Android Package Kit. If you're familiar with Android at all, an APK is an app for Android. So here's, some, here's your first clue that this is running Android. So let's try to install Solitaire. And no matter what you do, like I said before, nothing works. You can't log in, there's no login button. So this app store is totally useless. Let's go back into settings. I can connect to my local Wi-Fi. Uh, Bluetooth works, I did test that before. Uh, let's check out cellular. There is not a SIM installed on this device, so it's really Wi-Fi only. You know, none of these buttons work. You can't flip to mobile data because there's no SIM installed, right? You can't connect to your network. Let's check out general. Go to about. So it thinks it's running iOS 17.02, and that is an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Model number, serial number, warranty, manufacturer, data, I think that should be date, August 2023, first use. Don't know if that's accurate or not. You can't click on the iOS version, can't get any more details here. And when you go to software update, you're presented with an upgrade to 1702, which I believe I'm running according to the about page. So I'm not gonna click on that right now. I don't wanna break this thing. I wanna show you a couple other things. Let's check out Siri. Let's turn Siri on. Hey Siri, doesn't work. Let's check out face ID and passcode. Let's do iPhone unlock. Let's enter a bullshit code, setting up face ID. Let's give this a try. So let's lock the phone and see if face ID works. So I didn't put my face in there. I just entered the code. So face ID doesn't work either. Let's check out the battery. I've noticed that this thing sucks down batteries. I've had to charge this thing often. You know, when I'm using it, it starts to go down and all of a sudden I have like 6% left. These are typical iPhone battery health screens. I doubt they work, so I'm just gonna leave them alone. And no battery usage available, which is suspect. Check out location services. I do have location services on. I'm sharing it with maps. Let's check out maps next. So notice here that this is the Apple Maps icon. I'm pretty sure that's an Apple Maps icon. If I'm wrong, just let me know in the comments. But if you click on Maps, it's clearly Google Maps. Okay, so it's asking me to update Google Maps. Let's actually give this a try and see what happens. It's bringing up the Google Play Store on this iPhone, which you can't do. Okay, so let's update Google Maps in the Google Play Store on a fake iPhone. Okay, can't install it, so let's move on. Let's check out Wallet and Apple Pay. That card does absolutely nothing. Let's move on. Let's check out the storage. So there's one terabyte storage here with 211 gigabytes used. Offload unused apps, this probably doesn't work. Doesn't work.
check out language and region. English thinks its region is Hong Kong. Let's change that region if we can. And we cannot. Let's check out the camera. It's not going to come out so well probably on this Android cast, but the camera's absolutely garbage. Even when it's not connected, it's very laggy. The picture is low res. Zoom is terrible. If you go into entertainment, there's a couple of default installed applications. You have Chrome. You have the Play Store, which you don't typically have, again, on an iPhone. The other thing I wanted to do here was to hook this up to the console on my Mac so we can see what's actually running, what's being logged on the device itself, and maybe get more clues in terms of what's running under the covers. However, since this is not an iPhone, your typical console or in Xcode console devices doesn't register this as an iPhone, so you can't really get at it as an iOS device, right? The other thing you have to do in order to actually get deeper into the phone is to turn on developer mode. And since it's not an iPhone, you can't really do that. I did some research and there's an application that we can install from the Google Play Store that will let you expose hidden settings on an Android. It's called Activity Launcher. Okay, it's installed. And now we want to search for developer, be under settings and developer options. I think it's this one here. We want to launch that activity. Okay, great. And so this enables us to actually get into the hidden developer menu so we can go a little bit deeper into this mystery device. Turn on USB debugging. Great. And as soon as we did that, it said we want to connect to this MediaTek L015B to the Mac. We want to do that. Always a laugh from this computer. And voila. Now we can see the device here. It's actually running Android 8.1 Oreo. It's quite old. And we should be able to open in Device Explorer and get some more details about what's underneath the covers. So now we can go back to Android Studio, go to View, Tool Windows, Logcat. And let's make this a little bit bigger. and delete my package. And now we can take a look at what this thing is doing. So we can let this run for a while, but I, I think it's evident, this proves it, that this is a completely fake iPhone that's running Android with an iOS skin. And the iOS skin itself is, is quite awful, right? It's extremely laggy. There's misspellings everywhere. The fake app store is just pointing to APKs. Digging into these logs, you don't see anything that resembles an iPhone. You don't see any of the typical iOS functions running like Darwin or Springboard or UIKit. Those are backbones of your iOS device, right? Everything here screams a really cheap knockoff device using old MediaTek CPU, clearly underpowered for the device, terrible camera, terrible audio. And what you see here are just your typical Android services that would run on any legitimate Android device, right? You have the Flinger service, you have uh, consistent connections to the Google Play Store. Uh, let's see if I can pause this here and maybe see some other things. Music Alley Go, this is TikTok. Let's pause it up here. You have the system UI, status bar, Surface Flinger. This is your Android version of what I think Apple uses. What is it, Metal or Quartz Core, something like that. But this is your, your Surface reaction. Yeah, com.send at Aircast. This is what I'm using to display the Android on my Mac here. Wi-Fi State Machine. Yeah, okay, see this MTK. M-A-L, Mal RDS. I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is your MediaTek Wi-Fi uh, modem device and service. So this particular service here is an Android-specific 
backend provided by MediaTek to enable connectivity. This is clearly Android related. Here you have ADB services. This is your Android debug bridge. So this is a, a backend that enables us to look at these logs and check out what's underneath. Yeah, Chatty is a logcat feature that reduces clutter in your console. So. so as if you need any more proof than what we've seen today, if you notice uh, the Zygote, this is the the base of how Android uh, kickstarts applications and processes on its operating system. Um, iOS operates different. It uses LaunchD to set up different sandboxes on the device itself to then launch your applications and, and services. So this is, this is an Android for all intents and purposes. I kept the Logcat running for some time, looking out for anything else interesting, but I think we covered the bulk of what we're gonna see on this device so if there's anything else that you want me to take a look at, if you notice something that maybe I didn't see, uh, just post something in the comments. We can do a follow-up video and go a little bit deeper. Uh, I do plan on making a second video that will open up the, under the covers and see the chip manufacturers and get a layout of uh, the, the hardware itself uh, inside the device. Um, and so far as purchasing items like this on Facebook, it's, I mean, what, what can I tell you? you? You get what you pay for, right? Uh, if you ever pick up an old device on Facebook, you want to make sure that when you meet the person, you fire up the phone first, make sure it works. Like in this case, the screen is completely off center on the device, so it was, it was a clear indicator that this was a fake. You want to make sure that it connects to the network if there's a SIM card attached, or that you can actually install your own SIM or eSIM and uh, get a dial tone, right? And clearly, if you purchase this something like this online and eBay, we can return it and execute the fraud guarantees that are prevalent on these uh, marketplace websites. So thanks for watching today. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, be careful out there and always know before you click.